Hey, how's it going? Dylan here, and today I've got an update on, a really good update, on my uh, anamorphic depth of field um, little pack for Unreal Engine. Uh, and basically, I have, uh, you'll be happy to know that I've managed to get a physically based one up and running, so no more weird values and altering the far focus and near focus and not being able to get a good result. Uh, now it actually acts as if it is a proper camera. Well, it is a proper camera now. So, let's get right into it. Got quite a few little additions since the original video to go through. Alright, so essentially now, instead of using just a straight post-process material, um, under the hood it is technically still using a post-process material, but it's through a custom camera class. So, uh, under Anamorphic DOF and then Blueprints, we've got Anamorphic Cine Camera, which is, um, you know, uh, basically just a variant of a normal cine camera so if we go ahead and drop one in and we'll move it up a bit if we go ahead and look through it as you can see it's uh, already getting already getting a little bit of an effect here So, okay, so what we've got, if I select the Cine camera here, uh, essentially um, I've decoupled, so by default we're not paying attention to the old focus settings um, to tie into all of the nice uh, kind of uh, depth of field for anamorphics. So essentially this act, this is a variant of a normal camera, so everything that not that you can do to normal cam normal cameras applies. Uh, so you can you know chuck it in sequence, um, do camera cuts that way, etc. It all works with it. Um, there's just a couple of things to take note of. Basically, your main controls. Uh, you can still change your focal length and your aperture up here in the normal spots, but just a bit further down, there's a section called anamorphic camera. So we've got a few selections here. This is where your focus distance is set for the anamorphic depth of field. If I pull that right back, as you can see, we're getting a nice defocused, um, nice defocused effect. And um, obviously there is flickering, but yes, that, that's when you render it out, it's fine. Um, it's just because of the temporal AA jitter in general uh, that it's based on. And because this is a post-process material effect, it's quite hard to get rid of that jitter in the current um, in the current way it, this is done obviously down the road when I do eventually get around to getting that plugin a proper engine plugin going um, this shouldn't be as much of an issue because I can filter it out easily all right so here we are we've got we'll focus on the front of this car here okay so uh, now for the purpose of this I will just defocus everything because to get a better view of of how the bokeh looks. So you noticed that compared to the old version, the bokeh actually does look a little bit different. It's because I added some options here. So we've got squeeze ratio number one. So if you wanted, you could do um, smaller squeeze ratios um, or even stretchier ones, like a, th like a three times squeeze ratio. Um, so you can, you know, you can get a, probably a, a nice circular pattern if you like as well. So there's some nice options there if you wanted to like Im imitate the kind of smaller squeeze ratios like a 1.3 uh, x anamorphic um, squeeze, then you can. Um, the, the point is being so you can change it and um, have a little bit more artistic license in emulating different lenses. Just leave that at 1.8, which is what I like it. Where I like it. Um, we've also got the anamorphic samples here, so. This essentially is how many samples, if I put this down to one, you can see we get this amazing effect. Um, <clears throat> and as I go up, you get better and better um, quality. Obviously, um, pushing this up does cause performance hits because um, you're doing a full screen kind of sampling uh, of these points. And the anamorphic samples, uh, probably I wouldn't ever push it above 20. Uh, you might even run out of <laughs> VRAM and cause a graphics crash if you go too high. So I'm probably gonna put a clamp on that before I release this version. Uh, but usually around, yeah, 12 to 16 
depending on the quality you want. And obviously you could have it on a lower quality while you're editing an editor and then bump up the quality as far as you want it for a cleaner uh, output image for render. Okay, so the other main thing here, feature, is um, this flat focus switch. So if I untick this, we've got the old um, bokeh look that this, um, that this uh, post process had. So I prefer the flat bokeh, but it depends on the look you're going for again. So it's nice and easy to do. And then lastly, I just added a distortion hook here to, to hook into the engine's um, image distortion um, multiplier. So we can just get a little bit of um, distortion happening here. Um, you know, get some nice stuff going. But yeah, that's about it. Um, as you can see, like it's, it's you know quite easy to get a nice effect now. And now that it's actually physically based, it actually calculates in pretty much the same way as the engine does in terms of the depth of field distance and such. So your results are much more accurate to how you would expect a camera to operate and the depth of field to happen. Uh, so if I were to click this and we'll focus on here as you can see we've got really shallow depth of field even even lower this even more so yeah you can get some really nice shots and the main benefit of it being physically based now is that that means that you can easily sequence it so I'll just show you that now if I open this anamorphic example sequence Windows Tiny. So, so this is just a little test sequence I whipped up, and essentially I've keyframed the um, keyframed the camera, and does a focus pull. Just something simple to demonstrate. Um, and as you can see, it now works really nicely. You can get a nice curve on it. You don't have to keyframe multiple values like with the old version, um, like just the post-process material-based version. Now you can just use a, a camera as a camera, essentially, uh, only basically setting yeah, your, your aperture, your focal length, and your anamorphic focus distance. So obviously by default, when you first add this in, um, you won't have your anamorphic um, distance coming in. So you just have to, in sequencer, from the top level, just add... Um, <clears throat> anamorphic focus distance. Um, you could also like keyframe anything else you wanted as well. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at the updated anamorphic depth of field for Unreal Engine 5. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it and um, go over and buy it if you haven't already, if you're interested in it. It's over on my Kofi, and hopefully eventually it will be on Marketplace, but the first version was a little bit simple apparently to put up there. Um, this version I might resubmit and see how we go there. But anyway, yeah, take care and enjoy your day.